Welcome to the Tripods Associates online web training video. The objective of this project is to create and develop an online web workshop which talks about work-life balance and solutions as of July 31st, 2013. Our team presenters are Jason Hall, Libby Murray, and myself, Debrie Smith. During our presentation, we will develop five topics to discuss what issues present a work-life balance and what solutions are available for employers and employees. We will start by defining what is a work-life balance. Please note key terms and the definitions associated with each topic. The first one we will discuss are what are the challenges experienced by employees in today's workforce? The second topic we'll discuss what are the negative effects of a poor work-life balance? And note the key terms of time famine, burnout, and how it can lead to career dropout. The third topic will be how have employers accommodated work-life balance issues? Be aware of key terms such as job share, flex time, and two types of paid time off, community service and maternity and paternity leave. The fourth topic we will examine are what are the positive effects of a good work-life balance on employees and employers. And listen for the key word of retention. The fifth topic we will discuss are what are the unique work-life programs used by major corporations who are successful in assisting employees achieve work-life balance? And one of the key terms will be pro. Libby, please start our web training video by defining what is a work-life balance. According to Dictionary.com, a proper work-life balance is the amount of time you spend doing your job compared with the amount of time you spend with your family, friends, and doing the things you enjoy. In today's society, a worker's commitment is more to themselves than to their employer. Workers are more likely to make sacrifices in their education or their career in exchange for more time with, for their personal life. This shuffle in priorities has caused many companies to modify their HR policies and create more programs to accommodate employees with their work-life balance. Some of the key challenges workers face in maintaining a work-life balance are workload, time, control and balance, and personal attitude and expectations. As companies try to minimize costs to improve profits, extra workload can sometimes be placed on employees to do more work with less resources. An extra workload can mean more hours at the office, which cuts into more personal time in the evenings and weekends. Furthermore, if employees feel that they are overworked and they're not receiving the recognition and support from their managers, a company can anticipate increased burnout and turnover rates. Work-life balance is dependent on efficiency and professionalism within the work environment. When managers and employees work together, are dedicated to their jobs, and support one another, environments are more positive to be around and you can sense that there is a right balance between quality and quantity of work. Debris now will talk about the negative effects of a work life balance. The work balance survey by Strategy One in 2010 stated among the 89% of Americans who felt that the work life balance is a problem, 54% stated it was a significant in the Family and Work Institute, they coined an interesting phrase of time famine. The majority of employees, and this is 60 to 69 percent of industrial, business, and employment groups, they indicate that they don't have enough time to spend with their spouse, partners, and their children. As Libby stated, a challenge in the workplace is burnout. Dr. Powell's blog stated that overworked employees, who may look like the person in this graphic, experience burnout in a cycle of exhaustion, cynicism, and reduced personal accomplishment and performance. They feel exhausted because they feel depleted of their emotional and internal resources. They become cynical and they attempt to distance themselves from the job. As a result of feeling exhausted and cynical, they feel less effective. Their performance and productivity decreases. The third one of cognitive difficulties Employees who are overworked have more difficulty focusing at work. For example, 45% of employees feel that they have to multitask too much, and the more likely they are to make mistakes at work. 
17% of those employees reporting high levels of feeling overworked say that they make mistakes at work often or very often. This topic of work-life balance affects virtually everyone, men, women, fathers, and mothers. In regards to the husband's or father's role in the personal or family life, 40% of professional men who work 50 hours or more, 80% of that group, they report that they want shorter hours. In Cheryl Sandberg's book of Lean In, Women Work and the Will to Lead, she is the COO of Facebook. And in her book, she discussed the national trend of women scaling back and dropping out of the workforce in high numbers. In 2007, there was a survey of the 2007 Harvard Business School alumni. Men were consistently at 91% of full-time employment. Women who graduated in the 2000s, they were employed at 81% of full-time status. If the graduates, the women that graduated in the 1990s, their percentage of full-time rate were 49%. Therefore, this is a negative trend, and this is called career dropout. Another classic example that Cheryl Sandberg stated in her book was that the ambition of young women is stifled because they feel that they ha may have children in the future. For example, a law associate, they may not reach for a partner, or a sales representative may have a smaller territory or they will be hesitant to take a management role. Therefore, by having poor work-life balance, you may experience time famine, burnout, and have difficulties of focusing and performing after your optimum level at work. It may reduce ambition and taking on more responsibility or being a career dropout. So let's listen to Jason Hall as he discussed the topic of how employees and employers can accommodate their employees and help them achieve work-life balance. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, we're going to discuss five options that employers can offer their employees in order to create a better work-life balance. Uh, first is flex time, which is a non-standard uh, schedule. It doesn't have to be 9 to 5. Uh, you could actually work four 10-hour days as long as you're working a full 40 hours a week. Um, so you have a flexible time to start and uh, finish. Uh, there's also telecommunity, telecommunity, excuse me, uh, which is working from home or remote location. Uh, the ways that, you, that you would communicate are email, telephone, teleconferences, or interactive meetings. Uh, this also creates a lot less commute time. There's job sharing, which is a regular uh, part-time position for two employees, uh, meaning that they're both working 20 hours a week as long as the two add up to a full 40 hours. There's paid maternal and paternal leave. What this means is that it's a paid leave of absence. It doesn't affect your sick, vacation, or personal days. Uh, this is available for both parents. And it's also available for birth of adoptions. Lastly, there's community service leave, which is CSL. This is a paid time off to volunteer uh, for different activities, uh, schools, nonprofit organizations, tutoring or mentoring, uh, blood, bone marrow drives, uh, organ donations, uh, disaster reliefs, and also emergency volunteer activities. So Debris is going to uh, next cover the positive effects of the work-life balance. Employers who invest in providing high levels of workplace flexibility often results in higher retention of employees. If people feel that their personal and professional needs are satisfied, they will want to remain working at the company. Also, when companies gain a reputation, let's say they are on the 100 companies to work for, they will have opportunity and work-life balance programs that's going to assist in the recruitment of talent to those organizations. The second thing is that there will be another benefit of positive work with their employees, including improved productivity among employees working at their peak hours because they will be able to dictate their schedule. They will have increased job satisfaction and organizational commitment. The third topic, in terms of cost savings, they will have lower insurance costs because they will have healthier employees and reduced overheads in the case of employees working at home. The fourth point of being healthier physically and emotionally, in the Families and Workplace Institute study, there's a direct correlation between work-life balance and physical health. 
the more flexibility and support that's given to the employees, the higher the response was in the status of their physical health. As the economy, employers, and employees work together with increased home life demands, work-life balance is a necessity to keep employees and employers working and living well. On our website, under the resources page, I encourage you to watch the vlog of a successful example of a person achieving work-life balance. Her name is Casey Harrington. She's a wife, a mother. She's studying for an MBA. She's a triathlete and she's an executive at Dell. And you'll see how she manages to find work-life balance and be successful in her professional and her personal life. Next, Libby will discuss unique work-life programs that employers have implemented to help their employees achieve work-life balance. Due to pressures to retain employees and to ensure that employees are healthy and happy, major corporations are creating new and unique programs to assist employees in maintaining Google, for example, has nap pods where employees can take a nap while they're working. They also offer services such as laundry and eyebrow shaping, just in case you needed a little touch up. Boston Consulting Group has implemented a red zone report, which flags when individuals are working too many long weeks, which is very common for consultants. Ultimate Software treats their employees to a free vacation every two years. Switzer Engineering Labs adds an engineer or adds an educational allowance to the first paycheck of every month of their employees. Employees can use this to pay off student loans, take a class, uh, take a foreign language, or even just brush up on any skills. All of these are good examples of how companies are thinking outside of the box to accommodate work-life balance. Some additional programs not mentioned are healthcare and childcare on-site services gym membership, LBGT benefits, and financial services such as require, requirement, retirement, investment, and banking. Jason will now conclude our presentation. So today we've discussed uh, what work-life balance involves. Uh, those examples are the challenges faced in today's workforce, the negative and positive effects of the work-life balance, the different work-life balance programs that employers can offer its employees, and can also implement. Uh, we'd like you to do more research yourself to see what you can do to create a healthier and healthier workforce. Uh, please visit our website, take a look around, and try out our question and answer page. I think you'll do a lot better on it than you suspect. Michael Thomas Sunborg tells us that a true balance between work and life comes with knowing that your life activities are integrated, not separated. On behalf of Tripod Associates, DeBreece, Libby and myself, we want to thank you for your time today. Good day.